keeps me going. Um, this recently came up after an expat had committed suicide. Because um, it's very common in the Philippines, actually, people killing themselves. Um, I'll be honest with you, uh, I'm stubborn. <laughs> no, the, the reality is I won't give in. I don't give in easily. But I'm motivated. I motivate myself. Um, I don't see things as coming to an end. I look for how I can fix it, how I can move it, how I can keep things going. I look at my wife, I look at my kids, I look at what matters. Because if, the, if I had no wife and kids, um, I'd probably be a lot more risky, let's put it that way. I'd be one of those guys that are roaming through the Middle East at the moment, <laughs> those are areas that other people are trying to avoid. Um, but I'm extremely stubborn. You've got to be driven. You've got to have something drive you, even in failure. Um, I've seen many an expat lose everything, but I preempt things. I look at things as if they did go wrong. So I then prepare for it. First thing I do is bank money. I don't spend money. If I have a good run of money, it sits in the bank and I spend as normal. If I have another two or three good runs, I then I might spend a bit of money, but the majority will still remain in the bank. Um, it's why when Typhoon Haiyan hit, we had loads of cash to give away. And even though I returned to the UK to rebuild the bank, I still had three months in the bank that I'd budgeted uh, before we ran out. And that's, that's, it's as simple as that. A lot of expats make bad decisions. A lot of them assume there's quick money to be made. Quick money normally comes with big sacrifices, like huge risks. Um, potential fraudsters. Uh, people that are just going to disappear as soon as you give them the money. Businesses that haven't been thought through. Businesses that you've got to buy now because there's so many people interested. A bit like that apartment we're buying up the road here. It's just up the road on the right. Um, two people are buying this week. They're really interested. You really need to close the deal. If you put 5,000 euros down today, then we can save it for you. Uh, that property's still empty. Nobody's bought it. <laughs> that was, that was uh, two, three months ago now. And we still want it. Um, but now I need to secure my setup in Spain before we venture into that. But like that, I didn't buy into it. You've probably seen that I suddenly stopped and said, right, moved from buying property to digging my heels in. Because at that point, I knew I was going to be leaving work because it was a... I try not to swear. A nightmare. Um, so the fact is, you need to adapt. You may not get what you want all the time, but the first thing you do, you start small. You have stepping stones. You go to the Philippines, never owned a restaurant before, why would you want to open one? If you're opening the business with somebody, understand what the business is. Everything I do, I understand it fully. It was me that's programming the servers for the call center. Um, and then later on, I started to see that I knew more than most of the Filipino guys I was dealing with. Um, when I say most of the Filipino guys, I'm talking about the ones that program them for all the call centers in Cebu, because there's only a small niche of them. Um, and I'm connected with every one of them. So you need to understand what you're doing. And most people don't. They take too many risks. But even when something really bad happens, I sit there, I'll have a beer, chill out, let, have a night of stress thinking about it, and then the morning after, I plan on how I'm going to fix it. One thing you don't do is give up. Never give up. Something always looks better in the morning. As such, step back, have a couple of beers, chill out, don't stress out. Stressing doesn't fix nothing. Um, the problem's still going to be there tomorrow. What you need to do is focus on what you can do. Um, the most I've lost in a short period of time was about £60,000. Now, that may be shock horror to some, but it also made £120,000 in six months. So I still come out 60000 ahead. But a lot of other people would have already spent that 120 grand. 
So when they went 60 grand, they were 60 grand in debt. I never get in that situation. Bank what you can and then develop things slowly. Um, there is no rush. Nothing's a rush in life. Is I mean, my wife goes, talks a bit about the Chinese and the Philippines because they would rather make a penny extra every day than make no money at all. And the, the whole concept of is it, you can build it up over 100 years. I know me and you don't think like that, but that's how a lot of people do think that no money. And I've, I've watched that Dragon's Den. And they're on about, oh, I don't know where I'll be in five years. Well, you're part of the problem relating to economies <laughs> because everything's short-term thinking. But anyway, that's another story. But you need to keep motivated. If things go wrong, remind yourself why you're doing it. Because um, that's where the positive focus comes from. That's what drives you deep down to push forward and just push past the negativity and the problems because you will make it happen because you don't want to um, slip back.